One of the worst of the black Hebrew Israelite lies is the idea that Esau, so Jacob's twin brother, Jacob's older twin brother and the son of Isaac and Rebekah, that Esau was somehow white and that white people today are descendants of Esau, also known as Edom, and that they are, they are, we are therefore, quote, white Edomite devils. So it's, it's not just a ridiculous misinterpretation of Scripture, but now something that, that tries to castigate people is now the enemy, because Edom could be the enemy of Israel, or Edom will be judged when the Messiah returns. Therefore, all the white Edomite devils will be judged. So it, it's, it's not just a myth and a lie, but it's, it's something that is pernicious and ugly. So the first problem with this is the Scripture doesn't say that Esau was white. In, in point of fact, according to black Hebrew Israelites— his parents, Isaac and Rebekah, were both black, as well as their parents going back. And his twin brother, Jacob, was black. And then we know later from Genesis 36 that he takes two Canaanite wives, who were according to the black Hebrew Israelites, they were also black. So that would mean that his mother and father and previous ancestors are all black, that his twin brother is black, that his two wives are black, and yet somehow he's white and his descendants are white. So, of course... That's completely ridiculous, absurd. Dr. Brown, your people fit the prophecies of Esau, Edom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. This lesson is going to be entitled, Dr. Brown, your people fit the prophecies of Esau, Edom. Now, in the opening, I put a video from this guy, Dr. Brown. He did a video recently entitled, Was Esau White? And all their different brothers are doing responses. Apostles, elders are going into this guy's madness, breaking it down. All right, now I want to go and show you here uh, real quick. For my history, you got several brothers. You had the elder brother, Yashawama, did various topics. There is no such thing as a white person, Ruddy, Dr. Brown, and more. El Apostle Gabar, there is no such thing as white people. Rebuttal to the comments of Dr. Quas Brown. And you see Dr. Brown's video was Esau White. Uh, from Jim S. Las Vegas, Elder Karatazar, Dr. Brown, none of you were ever white. Get it right. And then earlier I saw another video too with a brother video at. Um, if I can find it here. There's a response. Yeah. Shalak La. Shalak La Amath. The elder brother, Zaya Nala, from the GMS DC, Washington, DC camp, he did a response, was Esau White. So I've been watching these videos. And the main thing, you know, all the brothers going into is that Esau was not white. He was red, just like you see right here. And this picture says a lot. Look at Dr. Brown <laughs> from the beginning. Basically chomping at the bit. He clutching his wrist. He's hurt. You people are hurt because you know that we know that you're Esau Edom. Now, what Dr. Brown did try to do was, and what is what a lot of Christians do, a lot of Edomites, a lot of Christians try to go into the scriptures and they try to make the whole mystery about who Esau Edom is. They try to base it off of a skin color. Why don't you look at prophecy? Prophecy clearly tells you who Esau is. It tells you who Jacob is in the last days. Why are you not looking there? Anyway. We know the reason why you're not looking there because you don't understand the prophecies. You don't understand the, the Bible, basically. Now, I did a video some time ago. And it's history on what the Edomites look like. Instead of worrying about all that brown, ruddy, he was this color red, he was this shade of red. But over here, it says he was hairy, he was like a sweater, like a red heifer. Yeah, okay. You mean to tell me that the whole destiny and fate of a people... Was, can, can be summed up by a damn skin color? Hell no. You got to look deeper than that. You got to look into prophecy. Now, this is a video I did a while back. This is what an Edomite really looks like. And it was a response to a video that Elder Pastor Hart did. And where he went and looked up the ancient busts of these uh, certain Idumian rulers. Which we'll do now. All you need to do is go into history. There were men that were rulers, right? Like the Herodians. Here's some of their busts right here. The Herodians were Edomites. Herod Agrippa, right? Herod Antipas, King Herod himself. These men left busts behind them and they were Edomites. What the hell are you talking about? 
to you people can sit there and argue. So let me get it straight. Because you said Esau wasn't white, so-called, because he's really red anyway. He wasn't ever described as white. Nobody in the Bible is described as white. So just because you 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 can do that, you can go and try to explain that away. We're supposed to ignore history. We're supposed to ignore prophecy. These are what the Edomites look like. They left behind their bus. The Romans were Edomites. It's in history, man. <laughs> I mean, it's really dumb. Now, if you got a problem believing that, okay, let's read the scripture here. Because King Herod shows up in the scriptures and he was an Edomite. He was from that, if I'm not mistaken, from that uh, Idumean line. Matthew 2 verse 1. Now, when Yehoshai was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Hold on. If you look up Herod right here, see, historians know that these people were Edomites. Right here, Herodes in the Greek. Let's look it up and see what we see. It says Herod equals heroic. The name of a royal family that flourished among the Jews in the times of, it says Christ and the apostles, which we don't say Christ, the Mashiach. Herod was the there was Herod the Great was the son of Antipater of Idumea. What did Antipater look like? This is him right here. Antipater the Idumean. This guy over here in the far left. And you can look it up. Different places. Well, you look up the different Herods and Antipaters and, and whatnot. You see them, their faces on coins. Right? You see Herod Agrippa. You see all these different people. You see all these different men. If we, if we go right here, check this out. If I say Antipater the Idumean, what do you see up here in the corner? Who is that? What kind of bus is that? What kind of man is he? Is he a damn, is he an Arab? No, he's a so-called white man. See? We ain't making it up. But see, what's, what's happened is these Edomites, they have hidden certain stuff. They try to hide it. Now, you used to be able to go and get a whole article on Antipater the Idumean with the bus. Now they took the bus off. And you can't see the bus, but they still give you the information. But it's too late. Once you put stuff on the Internet, you can't get rid of it. Dr. Brown, you, that's a gross miscal miscalculation on your part. Now, let's go back to the definition. Because it gives you history. It says the name of a royal family. That flourished among the Jews in the times of the anointed and the apostles. Herod the Great was the son of Antipater of Idumea, appointed king of Judea B.C. 40 by the Roman Senate. What was that? Why is that significant? Because the Romans were Edomites, right? And we know that we were under captivity. And who was the ones that put the, put the Savior to death? The Romans. Our wicked people gave him up, but the Romans was the one that put him to death. King Herod was, you know, he was an Edomite. It says, at the suggestion of Antony and with the consent of Octavian. And you can go all to that history and see different stuff. Let's go down a little bit. B says, Herod, surnamed Antipas, was the son of Herod the Great and Malthas, a Samaritan woman. You go into it here. And they're going to try to throw, you know, Arabia in it, try to make them be Arabs. No, that, that original line came forth through King Herod. I mean, I'm sorry, through, uh, Ant uh, Antipater the Idumean, and even going back further than that, these people were Edomites. Philip of Macedonia was an Edomite, a Philip of Macedonia. Let's see here if we see anything else. You see all kind of stuff. Uh, if you look down here further, it says Herod Agrippa I was the son of Aristobulus, Aristobulus, and Berenice, and grandson of Herod the Great. After various changes in fortune, he gained the favor of Caligula and Claudius. And they too were Edomites. All them Roman devils, Edomites. And they got books out there. There's one book called uh, Rome, the Empire of the Edomite. What color were the Romans? For the most part. Look at this, Rome. Salakia. Just hold on, brothers. Rome. Empire. Of the Edomite. There's a, there's a literal book called this. Right here. To the left. The Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites. Look right here. Adrian Goldsworthy. Rome in the name. Well, that ain't really what we wanted. 
want to roam the empire of the Edomite. Rome, the empire of the Edomite. You see it, it's, it's there. Here's another one. And we know very well that the Romans were Edomites, right? And it, again, here's these busts of these people. It ain't hard. Now, we can also go into prophecy because the prophecies tell us what we need to know. Down here, all of these are under King Herod, right? And it just talks about them more and more. And we know through history that uh, the Edomites were forced converted by uh, John Hyrcanus, right? So, they, so they, the story they tell you is that the, the Edomites were mixed in among the Jewish people, which, no, they were the same damn folks. Same damn folks. Ain't no such thing as Jewish. But I got to watch how I say that because what do they do? Anytime you start bringing out history and facts and they want to remove your video, that's trying to conceal the proof. See? And you can go into these different busts. These people were all Idumians, man, the ones that you see. They have certain busts there and... and you know, like Vocab Malone tried to say the Edomites were done away with. Well, when were they done away with? Because you see in the scriptures there were Edomites during the time when the Savior was on the scene. See, they can't explain all their madness. See, there's all kind of busts and images of, of individuals who we know are Edomites. And that's all it is, too. You can't get away from this stuff, uh, Dr. Brown. Anyway, let's start bringing up the first prophecy dealing with this. This is Ezekiel 36 and 5. See, Dr. Brown, they want to play them games dealing with words, talking about brown, ruddy, red. Forget all that. I mean, don't get me wrong. The brothers did excellent jobs in breaking all that stuff down. But this is the games that they will play. Whenever you control all the books, whenever you control, you know, everything, you can, you can try to make things seem the way you want them to seem, seem. The same way that these devils say that, oh, when they try to prove that Adam was the first, you know, that he was a so-called white dude. They'll say, oh, well, see, when you look at the word Adam, it's a dome, right? That means he was red. But then when you say Esau was red, they have a fucking fit. Oh, no, Esau wasn't white. Well, which one is it? And red and red is two different things, by the way. And brothers are doing excellent jobs of breaking that down. I'm going to deal with the prophecy. And even when you look at Dr. Brown right here, what color is he? He is red. Now, when it comes to people that was, when you go to the scriptures, let's start at verse 1. Ezekiel 36 verse 1 says, Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord power, because the enemy has said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. So your enemy, the Israelites' enemy, was going to try to take over the land. They're going to take over the land. When you read down here, and you know, let's keep reading. It says, therefore prophesy and say, thus said the Lord, power, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord, power. Thus said the Lord, power to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate places and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus said the Lord power, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. So this is a prophecy against Idumia. What was it? What did it say that they were going to do? Which have appointed my land and to their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Hmm. So the scripture says that the Idumians was going to take over the land of Israel, and they were going to say that the land is theirs. They're going to identify themselves as Israelites. This is what the scripture is going into. They swallowed us up on every side. There's no way in the scriptures, and you know, the glaring fact is this, that's obvious, is that you people fit the prophecies of, uh, of Esau Edom because pursuant to prophecy during the first earth age Jacob wasn't even prophesied to go back to the land so if you're in the land there now who are you and show us in the scriptures where did pursuant to what we just read where was Esau can you point to us in history and show us when Esau took over the holy land because according to your theology you never even talk about that you people say you were the people from back then you've been there, been there the whole time but the prophecy said that Esau was going to take over the holy land 
Hmm. You just can't, you can't deal with it, Dr. Brown, because you're not the people. Let's read that again, Ezekiel 36 and 5. You know what? Let's, let's see if we can go to the good news translation and see if it gives us anything on that. Let's do that. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Good news translation, right? Salakia. All right. Is it, and, and, and these videos are just for the true brothers and sisters. They ain't for the masses. The masses are going to get caught up in color. You think you still think you can go back to Genesis and with, with different rulerships coming into power and, and decide and decide uh, where certain people are today. No, you ain't going to be able to do it like that. You got to go pursuant to what how the Lord laid it out in prophecy. This is Ezekiel 36 and 5 from the Good News Translation. It says, I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken out of the heat of my anger against the surrounding nations and especially against Edom. With glee and contempt, they captured my land and took possession of its pastures. When did that happen, Dr. Brown? When did Edom capture the land? I'll tell you when. 1948 rings a bell. That's part of it. So prophesy to the land of Israel, tell the mountains, hills, brooks, and valleys what I, the sovereign Lord, am saying in jealous anger because of the way the nations have insulted and humiliated them. So we lost our land and Esau, Edom was the ones that took it over. Now we follow further than that. Right? Let's go here. Psalms 137. And we always go into this stuff. Always go into this. This is Psalms 137, verse 7. It says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. The subject here is the children of Edom. Right? O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Now it's talking about the daughter of Babylon. You see that? So the children of Edom are equated with the daughter of Babylon. And where is the daughter of Babylon? Go back to, to um, Jeremiah chapter 50 we was talking about, right? We had to go to that. From last week when Dr. Brown was talking about Jeremiah 50, had nothing, you know, he was talking, about, talking about, he was talking about ancient Babylon. No, it wasn't talking about ancient Babylon. It had nothing to do with ancient Babylon. It was talking about the daughter of Babylon. Old daughter of Babylon who are, who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So you see here, the children of Edom mentioned with the daughter of Babylon. If we go from there to Isaiah, is it Ze maybe Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah 2 and 6. <clears throat> it says plainly, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. The land of the north here is talking about America or North America. Babylon the great, daughter of Babylon, ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. So the subject here is the land of the north. Listen close. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Now it says Israelites, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. So we just read in Psalms 137 that the daughter of Babylon was mentioned right along with the children of Edom. So here we go see in Psalms 137, Salakia, in Psalms 1, I'm sorry, in Zechariah 2, let's go back. Zechariah 2 and 6, now it mentions, deliver thyself, verse 7, O Zion that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. So the children of Israel, right, are not in their land, but they're in captivity under the daughter of Babylon or in the daughter of Babylon. Is the main place because it says it spread as abroad as the four winds of the heaven. So that means the Israelites are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But the main place they would be, O Zion, dwells with the daughter of Babylon. So who rules the daughter of Babylon? The Edomites. The Edomites. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoil you. For he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Further than that, Isaiah 46, I'm sorry, 47. Isaiah 47 says that the daughter of Babylon, let's read it. Isaiah 47 verse 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. The same topic, same subject, virgin daughter of Babylon. We already know that the children of Edom rule the daughter of Babylon, that the children of Israel are in captivity in that place. 
Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So it's talking about the virgin daughter of Babylon. If you go to verse 6, it tells you that the Israelites are there. I was wroth with my people. Who's the most highest people? The Israelites. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. So the children of Israel was given into the hand of the daughter of Babylon. And the ruler of the daughter of Babylon are the Edomites. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient has thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So here you go. You see the children of Israel in captivity, right? The, the yoke, going back to Deuteronomy 28, 48, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck till he have destroyed thee. It's the same damn thing. Now I want to go to, just hold tight here. Let me see what, what scripture I want to get. <clears throat> now we'll go to, let's go to Jeremiah, showing you that there's a prophecy that says, remember that phrase, land of the north, which is the daughter of Babylon, we know the Israelites are in captivity there. This will show you that they're going to come from that place. Jeremiah 3, 18. Let's see here. Uh, just hold on. Yeah. Jeremiah 3, 18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north. There it is again. The daughter of Babylon. To the land that I have given for an inheritance to your fathers. And that's a bonus. That tells you, Dr. Brown, that the children of Israel are going to come from the land of the north and all 12 tribes are going to be together when they go. But yet you still maintain that you're the, you're the Israelites. You're the Jews, you say. So you're going on all this stuff about color of skin. When you deal with the prophecies, we can clearly see what Esau is. Esau, main place of, of uh, is the Holy Land. They took over and they say that they're the people of the Lord and Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, which we see you devils over because you're over here. You got the Israelites in possession. You got us in captivity in the daughter of Babylon. The scriptures say the Israelites will come all together, the 12 tribes. The elect from those tribes are going to leave this place, and then they're going to go home. But you maintain that you're only one tribe. You just can't add up with these prophecies, man. That's why you avoid it. That's why you're making a big stink over color, because you know these prophecies are kicking you all upside the head. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Thou will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper. This is going to be the Savior right here. From the house of David, a righteous branch and a king, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, is he here yet? No. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where they had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So just to tie that in together, showing you that the children of Israel will be in the land of the north, which is the daughter of Babylon, which is ruled by the children of Edom. So going back to Ezekiel 36 and 5, right, it said Esau took over the Holy Land. He's going to take over the land and say that they were him. And another, another big clue is the fact that these, these are what we currently are in prophecy is not the time that Jacob will even be back in the land. We're in the time of prophecy right now where Babylon the Great will be ruling, which is Esau's empire. Let's get a couple of more scriptures here I want to get. I want to go to Joel chapter 3. This tells you what well, we read in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel uh, 36 and 5, listen to this, Joel 3 <clears throat> and 6. It says, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. These Grecians, when you look up this word right here, it's going to say Jawan, right? Which is why a lot of bugged out Israelites think this, that the Greeks were uh, from uh, Japheth. But no, these same people are the Edomites right here because they took over Japheth's land and they put the name on themselves. The children of Judah and Jerusalem were sold into these white people, so-called white people, right? And they are Edomites. If we go to Amos, is it Amos 3? Just hold on here. I might be wrong in the, in the verse. Yes, yeah, Amos 2, I believe it is. Or it may even be 1. Amos 1. 
right here. And before we do that, let's go back to Joel briefly. Because I should have read up a little further. Joel 3 and 4. Yeah, then what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? These are Hamites right here. And all the coasts of Palestine. When you render me a recompense, and if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So Tyre and Zidon did something here. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their borders. See that? So, the Hamites sold the Israelites to a people known as the Grecians, which were really, in reality, Edomites. Amos 1 and 6. That's how we got to the daughter of Babylon in the land of the north. Amos 1 and verse 9. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Tyrus. This is Tyre, same as Tyre and Zidon. If you go here to Tyrus. And I'm going to have to hurry up and wrap the lesson up because I know people's attention span is not so good. See right here, Tyre or Tyrus. Same folks, which they were Hamites. It says, Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remember not the brotherly covenant. Now, does the same thing happen as Joel chapter 3 when it talked about you have taken my people and delivered them unto the Grecians. Those Grecians that it was talking about were Edomites. That's who it was speaking of. Which, in the scriptures, is the land of the north and the children of Edom. There it is right here. Same folks. Same people. So we have yet to be delivered from you people. So going back to Ezekiel, let's go back to it. Ezekiel 36 and 5 again. It said these people are going to take over. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Therefore, thus said the Lord power, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all I do you, which have appointed my land into their possession. I do me right here is the Greek way you say Edom, stinking Grecians which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart and despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey, which really in reality is just the Edomites, man, right? They were Edomites, you see? And the Edomites are the ones that's going to be in power when the Savior comes. Isaiah 63, and everybody know that you're in power right now, Esau, Edom. Isaiah 63 and 1. You can read this whole chapter or the first six, six verses, it goes right into Esau, Edom. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I to speak in righteousness, mighty to save. The Savior is going to come and go to Esau, Edom, and put judgment on them and save his people. We're going to be delivered out of your hand. It's right there in the scriptures, and it's, it's in other scriptures. If we go, let's go to Matthew. I'm sorry, let's go to Luke. The Savior said that the Israelites are going to be in captivity I put like the, the Israelites would be in captivity until he comes back and saves them. He didn't say it that way, but that's when we're going to be in captivity until he comes back and save us. But he said we would be our land would be trodden down of another nation until their kingdoms were fulfilled. You don't break the prophecy and then go back to the Holy Land before the Savior comes. The Savior is the one that's going to He's going to come back and rule. But right now, Esau Eden would be in power at the end of the world. That's why the Savior goes there in Isaiah 63 and stomps them out. Luke 21, 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Talking about the Israelites. And shall be led away captive. What's captives? Going back to the curses. Slavery. We just read about it in Joel 3 and in Amos 1. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, the other nations, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So if you go back to Ezekiel 36, it tells you that. The Savior was right on point with what he was saying. Because other nations have taken over our land, and the main one is Esau, Edom. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all I doom you. The heathen nations live over there, but you also got... I doom you living there, which appointed my land into their possession. You took over the land. You took the Lord's land and said it was yours. With the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. 
You see, now when the Savior talked about the times of the Gentiles, he was talking about over here in Daniel 2. I might have it wrong. In chapter 2, let's go back. Daniel chapter 2, who would be in authority? The first kingdom was Babylon. <clears throat> These are the times of the Gentiles. The second kingdom was Medo-Persia. And then Greece took them down, which is the third kingdom. And then finally, the fourth kingdom would be Rome, which is what? The empire of the Edomite. Esau would be in power. Take over the Holy Land, put us in captivity. Going back first, they crucified the Savior and, and put hell on our people back there in the Holy Land, which we read about King Herod. He was one of them. But he was a, he was a, what, a governor, if I'm saying it right, of Judea, of the province. But he was a Idumean. And this is that fourth kingdom, Rome, that will be in power when the Savior comes back. We read it here. Right before the divine kingdom comes, Rome is in authority. And during this time, the Israelites don't even go home until the divine kingdom right here. Daniel 2, 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So, Dr. Brown, you're wrong. You're completely wrong. You're going on and on about a color, but we're still in the fourth kingdom right now. How the hell can you be the Israelites or be the Jews back home in the Holy Land ruling during the fourth empire on the earth, which is governed by Esau, Edom, unless you're Esau, Edom? You fit the prophecies. Let's show you that. You fit the prophecies of Esau, Edom. And this is one right here that you keep trying to duck. All you devils try to duck, but you can't duck it. You can't duck these, these scriptures. You had to have known we was going to bring all this stuff out. You think that you're going to be able to just say, oh, well, I guess the white man's not Esau since, since it says right here, ready or red or the color. That, that don't mean nothing. See, you're not going to get the deep things. We can't. Brothers are explaining it and breaking it down, but we know you devils ain't going to get it. You're going to say we're making it up. You can't say we're making this up. But you even ignore this too. It's the same thing, but that's all right. As long as we know the breakdown of it, that's all that matters. As long as the sheep are not fooled by you devils. This is 2nd Ezra 6. It tells you plainly who is in rulership at the end of the world. 2nd Ezra 6 and 7. Then answered I and said, What should be the parting asunder of the times? Or when should be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So the question here is, What's going to be the parting asunder of the time which is the end of the world? And when should be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follows? Right now we're in the first earth age. The Savior called the times of the Gentiles. The Israelites will remain scattered from the Holy Land and in captivity in the daughter of Babylon, mainly under the children of Edom until the first earth age passed. And the beginning of it follow uh, Salakia. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. What? Esau is the end of the world. Dr. Brown, Esau is the end of the world. How could you be Jacob? And you weren't even supposed to be in the land right now. You weren't supposed to be in the land until the Savior came back. We done read a couple of prophecies dealing with that. You're a bold-faced liar. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So, so Jacob's world... Doesn't does it come until Esau's ends? We just read it in Daniel 2 44. The divine kingdom doesn't come until Esau is taken down right here. You can see it. The first kingdom, Babylon, Medo Persia the second, Greece the third, then Rome is the fourth. And right after the Roman Empire is destroyed, then the divine kingdom comes, but the Savior comes and establishes that. So we write here between the fourth kingdom being ruled and the divine kingdom being set up because if the divine kingdom was here already we would all be or the savior would be here with his people you say you're his people but where's the savior where's the other tribes at where's the gold streets as you hear different brothers bringing that out where's the gold streets world war three hadn't even happened yet for goodness sake there was a pandemic that just occurred what not even a year ago it's just officially they said it's over but yet the scriptures don't say that the pandemic would happen. It said there would be peace when the people of the Lord go back to the land. But see, you getting stuck and hung up on arguing about a damn color because it's detrimental to you. This dude is hurt. That's why he was looking like biting his lip, grabbing his wrist. You chomping at the bit, cuz. And you still ain't no further 
no closer than you were to proving that you're the Jews. You ain't disproved that we the Israelites. You hadn't proved that Esau's not the white man, none of that, because according to the prophecies, you fit the prophecies of Esau Edom. Do we need to read Ezekiel 36 and 5 again? And you're in power right now. You still rule the world. If you rule the world, then you Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. Let's, let's make it bigger right here. Second Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. The end of the world hasn't came yet. But Esau is in power. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Everybody know that the Roman Empire, the Romans were Edomites. How the hell Jacob going to be back home in the Holy Land? Let's get a bonus here. Because the scriptures say when Jacob comes back and he comes down out of heaven, that's when the kingdom going to be set up. Anyway, how the hell can Jacob be in the Holy Land during the rule of Esau, Edom, or the rule of the Roman Empire? When Jacob was supposed to go back to the Holy Land, to the Roman Empire was destroyed. We just showed it to you in Daniel chapter 2. Did we not? The divine kingdom does not come, which is the Savior ruling and his people going home. That doesn't happen until the Savior comes and Babylon the Great is destroyed, which is the ruling place of the Roman Empire. I mean, I don't get it. Well, I do get it. But I'm saying for the humor, I don't get it, Dr. Brown. You fit the prophecies of Esau, Edom. If you're in the Holy Land right now, any people in the Holy Land now claiming that they're the people of the Lord, they're actually our wicked twin brother, Esau, Edom. And you can't get out of it. This is a bonus. Revelation 21 and 1, the new heaven and earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Wait a minute. In 2 Edges 6, in 7, let's go back to it. It says that Esau, Jacob is, is the, is the uh, let's read it. It says, uh, verse 7, Then answered I and said, What should be the parting of son of the times, the end of the world? Or what should be the end of the first? That's the key. End of the first what? End of the first earth age. Or when should be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, from Abraham and Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So when Jacob comes, that's the second earth age, which is the end of the first when Esau is in rulership. So if you go back to here, Revelation 21 and 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven. And the first earth were passed away. So in the first heaven and the first earth, we're still in that rulership right now. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem comes when? After the first earth age. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. This is when Jacob goes home. We already proved it. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven, Prepared as a bride of dawn for her husband. Why did they come down out of heaven? Because they were beamed up. They were beamed up by the Savior. They went up into the chariots. And the Savior took them back. You see? Took them up into the heavens. And then, and you know, from then on, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, Aunt Dr. Brown, you're wrong. You fit the prophecies of Esau, Edom. Yet you're still going on and on with this whole farce. Trying to convince people that Esau, you know, that, uh, was Esau a white man? No, he wasn't white. He was red. And you're red. Your people are red. Look at him. Look at him right here. I think Seinfeld described it as a pinkish hue. <laughs> Look at this guy, man. Hair, lip. Hurt. Through and hurt. Grasping his wrist. Clutching his wrist. Biting his lip. He know that he fulfills the prophecies of Esau, Edom. But you're trying to, you're trying to hold that fake-ass doctrine together with band-aids and... and, and you know, well, I forget what them little band-aids called sutures. <laughs> you trying to hold the shit together. <laughs> trying to hold that fake-ass doctor together with sutures, man. It ain't working, cuz. It ain't working, quas. Cuz, quas, whatever your name is. So, you know what, brothers, that's it. We can, we can keep going, but what's the point? And they ain't going to get it anyway. Don't get swayed by this dude, this, you know, trying to use these words, then trying to go to a different translation to prove to you. Right here, say red like a hairy garment. Over here, say like red and all over. He was hairy. Ain't no baby born hairy, man. Yo, dumbass. Ain't no babies born with covered hair. He was red all over, like you. Meaning, he no pigment in his skin. But, you know, 
Instead of arguing about that shit, let's just deal with prophecy. Dr. Brown, your people fit the prophecies of Esau, Edom. <laughs>